This lesson deals with time dependent signal sources. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 4, starting on page 1. In this chapter, we're going to describe AC circuits with cosine functions. These are referred to as sinusoids in general. So suppose you have a voltage V of t. We'll say that's equal to V sub A times the cosine of omega t plus phi, or perhaps a current I of t, and say it's equal to I sub A omega t plus phi. Let's sketch V of t versus time. Here's that cosine function going up and going down, and we'll define some of the terms below. The cosine goes between plus 1 and minus 1. The cosine is equal to 1 when the argument here is equal to 0. So if we solve for the value of t to produce that, we would say set this equal to 0, put this on the other side of the equation as a minus phi, and then divide by omega, and that would be the value of t. That's minus phi over omega. When t is equal to that, this becomes 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1 times v sub a gives me that value right here. Now, if you start at a point which has an amplitude, it has a slope, and return to that same amplitude and slope, that's referred to as a cycle. A period is the length of time required for a sinusoidal function to pass through a cycle. So it'd be our period, likewise, from going from here to here. The reciprocal of the period gives the number of cycles per second. We also call that frequency. That's equal to 1 over the period. The units of frequency are cycles per second. It was renamed after Heinrich Hertz, a German physicist, in around 1960. And we just call it Hertz, or just Hz for short. In our cosine function, there was a term omega, and that represents what's called angular frequency. It's related to our frequency in Hertz by 2 pi. It can also relate it to the period as 2 pi over the period. And the units are radians per second. The angle phi in our cosine function is referred to as the phase angle. It has units of radians, but most engineers use degrees. You can convert from radians to degrees with this following formula, that the angle in degrees is equal to the angle in radians times 180 degrees over pi. Let me do a couple of simple examples. Suppose that y was 1 radian. Then x would be 180 over pi times 1. That'd be 57.296 degrees. If x were equal to 1, we could then solve for y by cross-multiplying the pi and dividing by the 180. And that would give me 0 0.0174 radians. If x were 180 degrees, I can solve this equation for y. Cross multiply it by pi, divide by 180. The 180s cancel, and you get pi, which is 3.14159 radians. The term that multiplied our cosine function, v sub a or i sub a, is referred to as the amplitude of the sinusoidal function. Now, going from peak to peak on that cosine wave, we had twice the value of v sub a or twice the value of i sub a. We refer to that as the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude. Here I sketched v sub a times the cosine of omega t. When t is equal to 0, we get 1 times v sub a, and then here's that cosine going up and down. And then I sketch with this dotted cosine wave a cosine that has a phase angle of minus phi. And that causes the cosine to shift to the right. Again, you could set this equal to 0 and solve for the value of t, and that would correspond to phi over omega. That's where this value of 1 times v sub a is. If the phase angle were positive, we'd actually shift to the left. I next want to define the average and RMS value of a waveform. To do that, let me find the power absorbed by a resistance due to a sinusoidal voltage. Take a voltage that's equal to, say, V sub A times the cosine of omega t, and put a resistor across it. The power dissipated in this resistor is going to be V squared over R. We're going to square this, so we'll get V sub A squared and the cosine squared of omega t divided by R. In trig, there was an identity which is an equivalent expression for the cosine squared. And that's equal to 1 half, 1 plus cosine of 2 omega t. In other words, twice the frequency. Let's sketch that versus time. The cosine goes between plus 1 and minus 1. Suppose that the cosine is equal to 1. I get 1 plus 1. That's 2. I'll cancel with that 2, and I'll get v sub a squared over r. And that's this point right over here. And of course, this can be equal to minus 1. That's going to make this equal to 0. And it actually corresponds to this point. This function is going to look like a cosine function, but always positive. Because I've got 1 plus something here goes between plus 1 and minus 1. Because the frequency is double what it was before, we're going to have actually two cycles in a period of 1 over the original frequency. And the thing to note here is that this is always positive because of the 1 that we have here with the cosine function. The average value of this waveform is found by drawing a line through the waveform where for one period the area above the line equals the area below the line. There's one cycle. Here's the second cycle. In other words, this area here is equal to this area, and this area is equal to this half and this half added together. 
You can also calculate it with the following formula, and that is the average value is equal to 1 over the period, integral from 0 to a period of f of t dt. Let's apply that to this waveform. The average value of the power absorbed by the resistor, I'll just call that p sub r, is 1 over the period, integral over period, of our function dt. Our function was v sub a squared over 2r times the quantity 1 plus cosine of 2 omega t. This is not a function of time, so I'll pull that out in front at the integral from 0 to t of 1 plus the cosine of 2 omega t dt. I'll write that as the sum of two integrals. So the integral of 1 dt is going to be equal to t evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. The integral of the cosine of ax is equal to 1 over a sine of ax. Take the a, which is 2 omega, so 1 over a, times the sine of 2 omega t, evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. So for this case, we're going to plug in the sine of t and then subtract the sine of 0. But the sine of 0 is 0. Cleaning this up, I've got t, 1 over 2 omega, sine of 2 omega t. You could write omega as 2 pi f. You can write t as 1 over f. That causes these two to cancel. And I wound up getting 4 times pi. 2 pi is 360 degrees, but we're doubling that, so 720. But that's also equal to 0. What I get from this expression is just t. The t's cancel and I get v sub a squared over 2r. If you look back at the previous page, that was right through the middle of the waveform. You can kind of eyeball the average value, or we can calculate it mathematically. Suppose we connect a DC voltage source across a resistor. What value of DC voltage would produce the same average heating effects as our AC source? So here's a battery, put the same resistor across it, Power is again going to be voltage squared over the resistance. It's going to be V battery squared over R. Could sketch that versus time, just a constant. Call anything a period and twice the period. You can see the average value is going to be equal to V bat squared over R, but again, could apply our formula. One over the period, integral over a period of our function dt. Again, it's not a function of time, so pull that out. I get the integral of 1 dt, which is just t. Upper limit minus the lower limit would be capital T, the period minus zero. The t's cancel and I get v bat squared over r. One way to compare AC and DC is to do this in terms of producing the same average heating effects. We take the average value of the power dissipated in a resistor with an AC source and set it equal to that of a DC source. We could solve for what the effective battery voltage would be that produces the same heating effects as the AC source. So let's solve this equation. The R's cancel, so it's independent of R, Take the square root of both sides of the equation, you get V battery, and then you get V sub A divided by the square root of 2. What this means is that a battery equal to V sub A over the square root of 2 produces the same average heating effect as a sinusoid with an amplitude of V sub A. Let me do another example to maybe illustrate this a little bit better. Suppose I have a pot of coffee. How many car batteries would it take to make a pot of coffee in the same amount of time as plugging that same coffee pot into the wall outlet? Suppose the wall outlet is 169.7 times the cosine of 2 pi 60 hertz times t. Then from our formula above, we would take the amplitude and divide it by the square root of 2. That turns out to be 120 volts. We sometimes call this the effective voltage because it produces the same heating effect. If I had a 12 volt car battery, I would need 10 of these to create 120 volts dc. So we take 10 car batteries and hook them in series. So the minus to the plus, the minus to the plus, and so on. So now I've got 12 times 10. Suppose it takes X seconds pot of coffee to be made. If I were to take that same pot of coffee and plug it into the wall outlet after it's cooled down, it would take the same amount of time to produce the coffee at the same temperature. So again, what this is saying is that DC voltage can be equated to AC voltage by thinking about it producing the same heating effects. Obviously, they're very different waveforms. We've got a constant voltage versus time. Here, we've got a sinusoidal voltage versus time. But they do both produce a heating effect when you were to hook them across a resistor, or in this case, a coffee pot. Let's generalize the last set of results. We took the average power dissipated in a resistor due to a battery and set it equal to the average power dissipated in that same resistor due to a sinusoid. R is not a function of time, so it can come out in front here. And that'll actually cancel with this R. To solve for the battery voltage, we would take the square root of this expression. This would be called the effective voltage that produces the same heating effects. But if you also look at the expression here, what we did was we squared the voltage found its average or mean value, and then took the square root. This is something that's called the root mean square voltage, or just the RMS voltage. And we could say in general, 
The RMS value of any function of time is the function squared integrated over a period divided by the period square root. Now, if you look on the back of a stereo or even an outlet, sometimes they're labeled 110 or 120 volts RMS. And that's a typical range of a household voltage in the United States. This implies that the wall outlet, if it was 110 volts RMS, would have a peak value of 110 times the square root of 2 times the cosine of 2 pi f times t, 60 hertz, and that would be 155.6 times that same cosine function. If you had a 120 volt RMS line in your house or apartment, the maximum would be 120 times the square root of 2 times the same cosine at 60 hertz, and that would correspond to 169.7 volts. And this is some of the properties of time-dependent signal sources.